Vibes Cartel retrial hearing have therefore have some very interesting things for the defense and also some interesting things for the prosecutor. But on day five, the judge get real stern from the prosecutor. And this is a very good look for the defense team. Yo, yo, one of these here dance hall, Lincoln Terrage Records. One of the talk I turn in dance hall, Lincoln Terrage Records. Yo, Antaraj, the meat you know it from man, you rockedness. So therefore, come and gone, and we see an article where I talk about five takeaways, actually, from day four. And I'm list the first one as unavailability of witnesses. Because we hear the judge talk about everything and say, if we not have the witnesses, we now have the man them sit down in a jail and them wait and now wait for trial and now wait to get witnesses. In a. We don't depend on that because the man them have a right for a speedy trial. So on Thursday... Justice Marva McDonald Bishop, who is leading the panel of three judges, declared that there would be no retrial if ample witnesses were not found. According to the Jamaica Gleaner, McDonald Bishop posited that it would be a waste of the court's time if the prosecution had to scout witnesses to testify in the widely publicized matter. This court would not be sending any case to the Supreme Court again to sit and wait until witnesses are found. Justice McDonald Bishop reportedly cautioned this morning during a hearing to determine whether the men are to be retried. To press the acting director of public prosecution, Carly Thompson, about the availability of witnesses, to which Thompson noted that her colleague Jeremy Taylor in his affidavit indicated that checks were made and that most of the witnesses were on standby. Justice McDonald Bishop was, however, unconvinced, stressing that the court has to be completely certain that the witnesses have been contacted and are willing to testify. Giving us a list of witnesses in your submission, I believe, doesn't cut it, and the other side has objected. Turner to Taylor's affidavit, the judge told Thompson, if you think that is enough, that's a matter for you. The judge added that no information was provided on whether he had spoken to any of the witnesses, which is the usual practice. The second takeaway from, from day four is leaked evidence. Acting DPP, Claudette Thompson countered the defense submission about some of the technological evidence that was used to nail the accused. She said that the Crown still has a strong case against the men, even if the technological evidence was omitted. And right now, so she had talked about um, the phone evidence. And that's where they were saying Vibes Carter and the other co accused, their constitutional right was breached when they used the phone evidence. And the Court of Appeal, um, the Apex Court of Appeal, the Privy Council, them did not that done and say that can be used. Again, Thompson's argument was interrupted by Justice McDonald Bishop. And she, and, him, and she said, I don't think your biggest chance is really on that. This case isn't about evidence. So the judge remind Claudette Thompson, this case right now isn't about evidence. It is about you having enough witnesses. So the third takeaway from day four was retrial could take place in 2025, say prosecutor. On Thursday, prosecutor Janet Forbes said that the safeguard system in the Jamaican court system could facilitate a fair retrial in 2025. In his submission, Forbes told the panel of judges that one key safeguard will be holding the jurors and giving them directives at appropriate intervals during the trial. They can be given at the start, at the end of each day. They can be well-timed. Forbes explained, according to the Jamaica Observer, adding that despite the publicity of the matter, a fair retrial could be guaranteed. McDonald Bishop was, however, unconvinced, and she said, I have a very real concern that I'm just going to lay it on the table. You have to help us with it. You have to explain it. People heard voices, saw images. She said in questioning how evidence included voice notes and videos read the public domain before an appeal decision was handed down. Defense attorney John Clark told the Court of Appeal on Wednesday that no common law safeguard was deployed to ensure a new trial would not be affected by the publicity surrounding the previous counsel's question of the 2014 conviction. And the fourth thing to take away from the trial... And the fourth thing to take away from day four was the state will have to bear the cost. And this was one of the things that people did that, that knock out and say, how taxpayers will pay for this again because they pay for a trial already that lasts so much days and it was the longest trial in a Jamaica history at that time. So the acting DPP told the court that the government would have to fund a retrial if it reached that point because issuing justice should be priceless. The state will have to bear the cost. It will just have to bear the cost. He told the Court of Appeal. 
attempted to cement her point, she added, M-U-R-D-E-R in general is worth it and this murder specifically because of how it was done. The reason it was done and I don't know how we can affix a cost to justice. Justice McDonald Bishop, however, believed that the point was a slippery slope and that if the state had to bear the cost, it might be a detriment to the country's resources. You are saying because it is a murder and the type of murder the government will have to find the money? McDonald Bishop asked. And she went down further to say, if one case is going to deplete all our resources, time, money, human, then that has to be considered. And the fifth and final thing that was taken from D4 was constitutional breach justified, says prosecutor. Acting DPP, Claudette Thompson further argued that although there was in fact a breach in the accused constitutional rights to a fair trial within a reasonable time, it is justified. Thompson pointed out that between September 30, 2011 to April 3, 2013, the arrest charge, trial, conviction, and sentencing of Dance All Star, Vibes Cartel, real name Adija Palmer, Sean Sean Storm Campbell, Kahira Jones, and Andre St. John's were conducted, which she argued as a reasonable time. She further said that from that point onwards, matters were dealt with in a timely manner. This included filing the notice of appeal, preparation of grounds of appeal, and serving of the grounds of appeal, consideration of extensive grounds of appeal, and the review of case law cited and assessments being completed. There was also an application to appeal to the Judicial Committee to the Privy Council which lasted over the period of four days. The granting of conditional leave took place on September 25th, 2020 and final leave was granted on March 7th, 2022. The matter was then with the Privy Council for two years. When asked by McDonald Bishop why the matter was in the system for 10 years, Thompson said there was a delay. The delay can be reasonably justified based on all the activities that took place during the 10-year period. The presumption of unreasonableness Having done this aggregation, we have rebutted that presumption. So we move into day five, and I must say, Vibes Carter here in court listings shows cases up to late 2026. Plus, they are also talking about Vibes Carter health situation, which is declining. So the Court of Appeal today, Justice Marva McDonald Bishop, has revealed that the Supreme Court's diary has cases scheduled for trial by jury stretching as far as late 2026. She made disclosure upon the final day of the retrial hearing for entertainer Vibes Cartel and his co-accused got underway Friday. On Thursday, acting DPP Claudette Thompson said the court system should be able to accommodate a retrial of the dance hall star and his co-accused by 2025. So yesterday, Claudette Thompson said the Court of Appeal, um, the Supreme Court, should accommodate one retrial by 2025. But when the judge looked upon the schedule now, Asua Aguan, Judah said something different. So Thompson was arguing the point regarding length of time that has elapsed between the alleged offence and a new trial. However, McDonald Bishop noted that within the past six years, two cases that have been sent from the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court for trial are yet to be given a date for the proceedings up to this day. McDonald Bishop said the dates in the court's diary for trial by a judge alone are currently at late 2025, while for trial by a jury are currently at late 2025. 26. So, right there, so now the judge are looking to all these things, and, and you know all that going on because the man of us have a right to a speedy trial. Plus, they're still in jail, so the judge have to go make some decision now which won't be friendly to the prosecutors if them can clearly show say Vibes Cartel and his co accused will get a retrial as quickly as possible. So the justice also told the court she would not be asking questions or seeking clarifications during Friday's session. What I leave here with unclear will have to stay unclear. I won't waste my time this morning reminding anyone what they should do. It's a matter for you how you all do your submission. The hearing started on Monday and is expected to end Friday. So the Court of Appeal should decide soon whether there should be a retrial and Justice McDonald Bishop along with Justices Paulette Williams and David Fraser will decide the case. So the judge give out her warning and the judge has said anything that's unclear now will remain unclear because we're there from Monday and this trial basically now go past Friday. The judge has said if you can't show the courts so you don't have to make contact with the witness them and don't have sufficient witnesses then we are going to have a problem. If you can't show me if I send this back to the Supreme Court we're going to have a retrial as soon as possible or no also or in a problem so with these things now it doesn't look good for the prosecutor and look much better 
for the defense via that subscribers so we know that after today the judge them are gonna take a little while to look into everybody's submissions and then the court of appeal will make a decision from there via the subscribers please leave a thought Please leave a comment in the comment section so we can talk about it. We've come to have another video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel those who haven't done so as yet. Also, please turn on your post notification bell so whenever I make a new upload, you can be the first to be notified. Peace out. Bless up. I'll definitely catch you in the next one.